<laughs> oh, just I'm just kidding. I'm, just kidding. Oh, I know. I had a minute behind. I had it all rolling. I had my music going. I had D. Miller's ID coming up next, and then the MP3 or all my storage fell on the floor. <laughs> A lot. I know like, that feeling. And then the songs are cycling through, and I'm like, oh, oh, redo it yeah. real fast. And uh, that's the fun of live <laughs> radio, as you know, sir. <laughs> oh, my gosh. Yep. What a time we live in. We were just chatting, you know. It's uh, I always talk to my older cats, I should I say. It's like living in the twilight zone, one of these movies that we used to see with three channels, you know. I can't yes, believe it re- where we are. It really is. Like I told you before we went on, that this is the first time since 1997 that I've been home this week. Usually this week is spent. I usually, my, my itinerary was usually Tuesday I leave South Alabama. I go to Clarksdale. I stay in Clarksdale on Tuesday night. I used to stay up at the Shack Up Inn. Then I go around to Hambone Gallery, visit Stan Street, and he always has a little jam session on Tuesday. You don't know, through the years, Teeny Tucker drops by, Curtis Elgato, Guitar Shorty, whatever. They just sort of have a little jam session. Or you stop by Ground Zero. You never who you're gonna, you never know who you're going to run into. And then I stay at the shack up in. Then Wednesday morning, I'd head on up to Memphis and, you know, see who the first face I would see in the lobby of the Sheraton checking in. And then the, uh, <laughs> then the uh, week began, you know, and this is a total void and it's, it's and it's you know it's always like I say always a family reunion. So a lot of our family members we don't don't know what to do this last week because normally it's filled for us. Now we have nothing right now. Yeah, I can picture those great scenes with D. Miller and uh, you know Bridget Purdy, yourself, everybody uh, at the Blues Festival. You had the Blues Challenge, and it is a great reunion where everybody comes. I'm sure you were just describing every weekend. You just pop in and see who's there and what's happening, and and that's being oh, oh, stopped at the moment. Yeah, that is. You know, we had the IBCs. Like I always tell people, you know, I always look forward to going to Memphis because it is like a family reunion. The big difference is, Tom, we like each other. That's yeah. the big difference between a, a real family reunion and the blues family. We all like each other. We do. There's love. And I, I, I remember one time, Tom, this was a couple of years ago, I was going down the elevator at the Sheraton and everybody was in the lobby. It was, this was before the, right before the VMAs where everybody's taking their photo shots and all, everyone's all prepped out, you know, and mm-hmm. this, and I was riding down the elevator with the gentleman and he said, what's going on down there? I said, why? He said, I've never seen so much hugging and smiles and laughing. I said, this is what we do. <laughs> you know, we hug each other. We're glad to see each other. We catch up. We Most of us see each other once or twice a year where we have downtime and we can just sit and talk and do everything else and just catch up with each other, get to know old family members and renew friendships and get to meet some new people, some of the young people coming in. You know, that's that's what it's all of really. And, you know, Scott Holt and I have talked about it several times and I've talked about it with several other fa- uh, blues family members. The music's fine. Most of us have heard all the music. We, we appreciate it in that. But what we value is the renewal of our friendship. That's what we really, really like. And we we just spend so much time together and uh, it, it's uh, it's unbelievable it really is and that's that's the part that i miss and everybody else misses well i felt the love on my show uh playing the ladies that were going to play this afternoon or you know all the cool tunes that they've blessed me with and the friendship and and i've had an injury i've been hurt for a while and they've been sending me thank you and i've been touching out reaching to to bridget lawrence lebo on my birthday you know d miller yourself and make myself welcome to in life. So it is like that. It isn't just you guys in the clubs with the fans. It's genuine and all over the place, you know. Oh, yeah, it is. It is. You know, every one of those ladies you mentioned are just dear friends. And, yeah, yeah, you get so many friendships, Tom, you wouldn't believe it. We see each other, and after five minutes, it's like we talked last week. You know, that's the way it is. And that, that's true friendship. You know, it really is. They remember things and they're, con- like you say, they're concerned about you. They're concerned. You know, it, it's a family concern. And sometimes it's deeper than that. But And one of the neat things is learning about that Blues Challenge. Can you explain that to everybody? Because that that's such a community worldwide competition that everybody comes to uh, in Memphis. Yeah, it 
It really is. Uh, I don't know what the statistics were this year as far as the number of bands, but it's normal. Like, I, I, I remember just a couple of years ago, it was like 235 bands from 40 different states, six countries, and six continents. They come over, and it all starts, uh, you know, we can start coming in Tuesday. And it really starts on Wednesday. Uh, Tuesday, everybody's sort of just uh, meet and greet type thing on the street. You sit on the corner and, you know, talk to everybody that comes by. You get to know everybody. And then Wednesday, the competition starts. They're assigned various places. You, of course, have the band category and you have the solo duo acoustic competition. But Wednesday, they start off. Wednesday and Thursday, you the group or the act will perform at the same club. Like, say, you're at Rum Boogie Cafe Wednesday and Thursday. You'll be there with maybe eight to ten other bands. But uh, on Wednesday, you may perform at seven. On Thursday, you probably perform at Rum Boogie at ten. Mm-hmm. And, and also, those two, even though you're at the same club, you'll perform in front of different judges both nights. Because the first night, you know, I may not like the kind of music or the kind of blues. They're play, probably playing a rock blues or something that I don't really you know, would judge maybe a little bit lower, but then you see them and that's right up your alley. That's what you love. So it sort of levels out there, getting it under a different judge's perspective. And then uh, Friday, it's the semifinals. I, I can't remember. They have changed the, uh, the rules uh, somewhat, how they choose. Sometimes I think they would choose X amount of bands from each venue. And then Saturday, of course, you have the uh, finals, and they take, I think, one band from one band or one uh, a solo duo from each venue, and then they have the uh, the finals at the Orpheum. And that's, you know, and then they get a lot of recognition. You, you, you get a lot of recognition because I've always told anybody who is, Ask me about it. What I've had several people, they'll call me and say, what do we do? This is our first time. I said, do the best you can do. Winning is not really the primary thing, Tom. There, I mean, there have been people through the years that didn't win. Michael Burks didn't win. Sean Costello didn't win. I don't think Susan Tedeschi won. I mean, <laughs> you know, mm-hmm. so they, I always say, just do your best because you don't know who's sitting out there. There's promoters sitting out there. There's record label people sitting out there. There's festival people sitting out there watching you. And just do the best you can do. And it it, it comes back because I know I meet several friends because you can't see everybody. I don't care who you are. You can't see all the bands. And a dear friend of mine who had Biscuits and Blues out in San Francisco, Steve Schwann, we'd run into each other on Beale Street and said, he would say, Gil, who do I need to go see? Did you see anybody that really impressed you? Because they nobody, there isn't anybody that can see everybody. So it doesn't take long. After Tuesday night, Tom, the, the word spreads up and down Beale Street. Hey, Tom, you need to go to Rum Boogie mm-hmm. because mm-hmm. there's an act there from Wisconsin that is a killer. <laughs> uh, you, you, or you have this act, you have that act. I mean, it doesn't take long for a word to spread around up and down Beale Street. And uh, really, that's what it's all about. It's a good, it, it is. And then during the day, you have people like Gina Hughes, who has a galaxy agency out of Nashville. She always gives a showcase at BB uh, King's, and she brings a lot in a lot of her friends, people that she represents, people that she has represented through the year. And I mean, we're talking like you know, Hurricane Ruth, Sean Murphy, Scott Holt, uh, just a lot of different people. And she brings them in during the day, so we have something to do. That's how she started. She said people need this, something to do during the day because the competition doesn't start until 4.30 or 5 o'clock. So she has that. Betsy Brown from Blind Raccoon has mm-hmm. a showcase over at the Purple Haze where she has a lot of acts that she's represented through the year. And there's all kinds of different jam sessions going on. And then after the IBC is over, usually about 10 or 10.30, that's when uh, Taz crew would have a jam over at, uh, Rum Boogie Cafe. He always has one for next generation blues on a Tuesday. He has a jam session where people just sign up and he'll go through literally over a hundred musicians, get up on stage and do a couple of songs. And he'll ask, okay, we may need another guitar player. Tom, come on up, play guitar for a couple <laughs> songs or whatever it might be. You know, and I mean, he literally runs through over a hundred. They register, they sign up and they call their name. Okay. Is Gil Anthony in the house? Okay. We need a drummer. Okay. No, we won't use Gil. We'll use somebody else. No. But I mean, that's the type of thing that goes on. So you, 
you just see so much entertainment and it, it, it's it's really a blast it's it's a different scene than the bmas but the ibc's is just a great place for networking too memphis is such a great place even if you're not there to compete i know through the years there have been a lot of musicians come just to network just to run into people and meet them because you talk i talk to you and i don't know who you know you probably saw my act and you you refer me to a festival or you refer me to a label or whatever it might be so uh that's uh, that's some of the things that go on during that IBC week. Like I say, it's a, a little different atmosphere than the BMAs, but it's uh, it, it's just pure love and just enjoy the heck out of it. Yeah, thank you, Gil. And like you mentioned, Betsy Brown, um, Bridget Purdy played there a couple of years ago, and she was live on right. Magoo Magoo. I interviewed her when she was down there. Now she yeah. just came to perform. Just a night right, right. like you were saying. And the other thing was really cool talking to the ladies. It's like a relay race. It's a time thing. You guys set up fast. You don't have a lot of announcements or time, I hear, when you got to perform. Um, so it's oh no, no, up. yeah. It's not like wow, well, you got yeah. it today, t- later tonight. No, you got a little frame, and then you guys got to perform. <laughs> I guess set up should I? Say. Yep. And, yep, uh, that's right. Yeah. That's really neat. When I hear, I was I had Richard Cushing from Free World on the band on the show a couple weeks ago, and he was telling me that he has a place that. All the time, they have artists, just like you were explaining, Richard, has all that come in and play with him forever. You know, you come in sure. town, and you just rock it, set up, and it's just an open forum for everybody to collaborate, which is really cool. That's right, yeah. Yeah, it is. It's a lot of fun. And, you know, I asked, and I've always wondered this, because uh, I don't know. I used to, I worked country way back when. I just got through it about 50 years I've been in radio for 50 years. 1969 was my first. Fall of 69 uh-huh. was my first year in radio. And I worked a lot of country. And I, I've been out of country since the mid-80s, early 80s. So I, and I've asked people, and I, I said, I wonder if there's such camaraderie and non-competitiveness in other genres of music. And I've been told, you know, some some people say, no, you'll never see you know, a bunch of country musicians, especially the younger ones, really jam with each other. You don't, you just don't see that. I don't know if I hope, I hope that's not true. I, I, I hope they, uh, you know, get together and learn from one another. But sometimes there's a lot of egos involved. And the, uh, the guys, most of the guys in blues have been around the block. You know, that's their everyday job. They play four or five times a week. So, uh, they're too busy to have, you know, you, like Luther Allison used to say, you leave your ego off stage. You don't bring your ego on stage. And I think that's uh, the the truth about a lot of blues musicians. They're there to, you know, they just enjoy each other. And they're willing to share. They're willing to share what they do and how they do it. And speaking of one of them, is one of the, you were telling me one of the ladies of Beale Street, Sandy Carroll, your friend Sandy. Yeah. She is so oh, kind, yeah. you know, and... uh on my show, always, you know, being promoted and always cool for me. You know, I love what she does and her husband and all those things that are happening down in Memphis. Too. Yeah. Explain a little you bit. Know, about yeah. Her, Sandy and your, yeah. Yeah. Sandy is fantastic. I think she's a great, great songwriter. She really is. And like I say, she spent a lot of years on Beale Street. And I've always wanted to ask her, and I have to do an interview with her here shortly because I kept telling her I'd do it, and I pulled a lot of the songs that she wrote through the years. You know, she wears so many hats. She's not only a keyboardist. She's a vocalist. She's a uh, backup artist. She's a, uh, she's a writer. I wonder what hat she would choose to wear if she could only wear one of those, you know, because she does so well in all three of them she's a, a extraordinary singer an extraordinary songwriter and a great keyboard player and her husband jim Gaines, you know he's just got and, and it's funny we were talking before we went on the air it says as long as i've been doing blues i never fail to learn one thing i i walk away from the two five-hour shows that i do every week i'll walk away from each show having learned something new but i was going through i was i can't remember even where i was but i was looking through some records And I saw a Journey album, and I I always look to see who produced it or who did the cover because I know a lot of people in the uh, sort of in the background Mm -hmm. that are producers or to do artwork, this type of thing. So I looked, and uh, the assistant producer was Jim Gaines. I did not know. He has never told me that he did a Journey album. 
And he's done everything from Tower of Power to Journey to Huey Lewis in the News to Stevie Ray Vaughan, Luther Allison. 